No matter what business you're in, past performance can dictate what's going to happen in the future. And when we look back at week 10 in the NFL from a fantasy football perspective, there are some lessons to be learned. This is FF Champs on Football Nation. Billy Enright is the purveyor of pigskin for all things fantasy football at ffchamps.com. Billy, an interesting week 10 in the NFL where defenses came to the rescue for a lot of people. Yeah, it was amazing. Typically, defenses can get you 10, 12 fantasy points. But this week, eight different teams, defenses and special teams, had over 20 points. Look at what the running backs did, Butch. Only four running backs this week scored over 20 points. And only two wide receivers scored 20 points. So to see eight defenses score over 20 points, definitely an anomaly in the world of fantasy football. We saw six fumble recoveries for touchdowns or, or six pick sixes. And then we also had uh, three special teams TDs. So that was quite a surprise. Eight different defenses scored over 20 points in Week 10. And another interesting thing that happened in Week 10, Billy, was the Falcons finally lost the game. No more undefeated teams. But losing on the field does not necessarily mean losing in fantasy, does it? No, not at all. The real winner were the fantasy managers that had any of their players from Atlanta or New Orleans. Look at what the quarterbacks did. Both Matt Ryan and Drew Brees had three touchdowns. Ryan had 411 yards in the loss, and Drew Brees had 298. And how about the tight ends? Both of the tight ends, Jimmy Graham and Tony Gonzalez, had two touchdowns. Gonzalez, one of his best games. This guy is just an ageless wonder at this point. 11 receptions, 122 yards, and then Jimmy Graham, another dominant performance from him. Seven receptions, 146 yards. Marquise Colston, Roddy White, Chris Ivory, they all got involved too. This was a fantasy football delight, not so much if you were a Falcon fan. As Tom Hanks famously said in A League of Their Own, there's no crying in baseball. You're yeah. amending that this week to there's no tying in football, especially fantasy football. Yeah, there's no tying in football. Who wanted to see a tie between the 49ers and the Rams? Both of those teams had plenty of opportunities to score in overtime, but there were some weird calls by the officials. The result, a 24-24 tie, and that's a big, big impact uh, when we get into the NFC West later on. It may cloud up the playoff picture, but from a fantasy angle, nothing really happened at an overtime. We had 15 minutes of extra time. You were expecting maybe Steven Jackson, Frank Gore, Vernon Davis, Danny Amendola to get more fantasy points, but neither of them really did. The only thing worse than tying in the NFL is tying in fantasy football. There should be no ties. Remember back when it happened in 2008 and Donovan McNabb uh, foolishly said, oh, I would hate to see what happened if there was a tie in the playoffs. That quote came famous, really showed uh, his, his level of stupidity when it comes to the NFL rules. I don't want to see any more ties the rest of the year. Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen for another four or five seasons. There's no tying in football. He's Billy Enright of FF Champs. Find out all the fantasy football information you need. Everything. Waiver wire picks up, injury updates, trade advice at ffchamps.com. This is FF Champs on Football Nation. Mm -hmm.